Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got something special for you guys. I've been experimenting with vacuuming and not the vacuuming that you're thinking of. I'm actually talking about using a vacuum chamber to help dry electronics. And I think I have the process down and it is a process. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to start out. I have a dry PCB, that's gonna be our dummy. And then we are going to wash it and then we are going to measure it. So we measure it once when it's dry, then we measure it second time after it uh, gets wet so we know what, how much weight we gotta lose. And then we're gonna go over it and we're gonna stick it in the, the dehydrator, which is basically a large vacuum chamber, and we are going to suck the moisture out of there. We're gonna evaporate it. It's gonna be quite the process. So let's go ahead and let's start out. Let's get our PCB and let's see if this experiment really is gonna work. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right guys, first step, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna grab our PCB. I have it in this Luxury food dehydrator. I've got it cooking at 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Not very hot, but we have to preheat it, which means all those components, we want to get them above 75 degrees because physics. Water has to get above 75 degrees to evaporate at room temperature at a nominal suction pressure. I can't have like ultra low suction, so we got to increase the temperature of the PCB as much as possible. Let's go ahead and shut this guy off. And right now, it's gonna be quite warm. Yeah, probably about 90 degrees. All right, so the first step that we're gonna do is we're going to weigh it. I have my scale zeroed out at zero grams. And you can see here, we have 134.99. All right, excellent. Next step, we're going to take that PCB, we're going to give it a bath. Now why would you take a normal PCB and get it wet? Well, if things spill on PCBs, if there's capacitors that leak, etc., it's pretty typical for electronic repair shops to go ahead and put it in an ultrasonic washer. Now, surprisingly enough, these uh, relays right here, these relays don't have any moisture that's really gotten inside them, and even if it does, ultra low vacuum is going to get inside them and it'll help evaporate it. But remember, we have to keep it above 70 some degrees. All right, so this PCB is wet. All these surface mount components have been moisturized quite firmly. I've got a bunch of moisture underneath this guy. I have some moisture in each of my ports. Now let's go ahead and let's measure it with the water. And I have 137.24. All right. The very next step that we have to have is we have to come up with a heat source. And since it's a vacuum chamber, I can't just run wires into it because that'll create leaks. So what I have here is a high density block of aluminum. It's got a lot of channels so it can store a lot of heat and it can give off a lot of heat because of convection. Although it's not going to really be convecting very much because there's not going to be very much air in the chamber. Nonetheless, it is going to give off infrared radiation, which will go into the PCB and maintain the temperature that we need to evaporate that liquid. So let's go ahead. We're going to heat it up. I'm going to get it reasonably warm here, guys. Try not to heat up that fastener on the top because that guy is my handle. Alright. Now it's going to take a little bit of time to heat up this aluminum. So I'm not going to heat it up as much as I normally would. This is mainly an experiment to figure out how much moisture can we really remove from something in a timely manner. Look at the two sides here. Let's 
obviously the pretty hot torch. You can hear it whistle. <laughs> It's pretty good. I wouldn't like to get it a little bit hotter, but that'll work for our methods. I'm going to take the PCB and I'm going to take this warm block of aluminum. I'm going to stick the aluminum down in the chamber first. Then I'm going to remove my handle and the PCB that is now wet. It's going to go down in the chamber. All right, folks, now we got to button it up and I will activate the suction pump. And this lid is like three quarters inch thick glass. It is heavy. Let's go ahead and open this guy, close this guy, kick on our pump, and you'll see a bunch of evaporation here already. And it starts happening pretty quick. You can see this is our pressure meter. We want to get it down to as close to negative 29 to negative 30 on the gauge as possible. And it'll do it. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Now this here is a 6 CFM vacuum pump. This is a two-stage vacuum pump. This guy pulls a very nice vacuum. I absolutely love it. It's got different size connectors. Maybe it doesn't get down as deep of a vacuum as I'd really like, but hey, I'm working with what I got, guys. So here we go. Down to... Negative 23. I open up this little valve over here. That helps get rid of some of the extra moisture. And then close that guy back up when we get to a lower pressure. This is the ballast. To get that all turbo vacuum, we've got to put that ballast back in. And let's see, we're at negative 25. And already, I see some of the bubbles happening down inside the chamber. So if we take a look down there, there are going to be little pockets of moisture. And, and funny enough, it's already evaporated a good share of it. But as that PCB gets heated up from that uh, chunk of aluminum, then it will evaporate more and more and more. Now it's true, I could have put this in a air dryer, kind of like the uh, one that I used to preheat it. Let's get over here. And it would have done it. It just takes a while. <laughs> it takes hours. And in that time, every single minute that you are drying something out, it's causing corrosion. So what we want to do is we want to come up with ways to evaporate that moisture as quickly as possible. And you can see that there's some pockets of moisture on this guy, but it's bubbling out of the connector over there. You can see it bubbling out from under the chips, and we are not even to that deep of a vacuum yet. Currently, it's at, what, negative 26, negative 27 inches of mercury. So yeah, we're doing pretty good. Tell you what, we're gonna let this guy run for about 30 minutes and then we will be back and we'll see how much moisture we can remove in 30 minutes. All right, folks, it's been about 20 minutes and yeah, I'm getting down to a negative 28 inches of mercury. That's actually pretty good. I'd like it to be down to negative 29, but there are some spots on that PCB where there used to be moisture. It has all evaporated. And I think we are good to go. So let's go ahead and close off this tank. We'll shut off that pump. Let's go ahead and let the air in. Let's see, we got all the vacuum out of the lines. We are good. Let's go ahead and place the top on the back that board looks like it oh I can feel the radiant heat from that aluminum block in there that works an absolute treat I dig it okay let's do this and let's tear our scale and 
and I have 135.043. If I would have left it in there a little bit longer, I probably could have got that extra 1% of moisture out. However, that's also within reasonable error because this is only like a $70 scale. So it's hard to say if it's got that kind of repeatability. I'd like to think it does. However, the ports are dry. This board looks like it is. 100% dry. I had water in each of those ports. I had water up and under this transformer here. Water was almost definitely underneath both these relays. And uh, it also, remember, it saturates underneath stickers and stuff, so that is also an issue. Dang. 135 and my before was 134.99. That's pretty good. 0.01 of a gram of water probably within the margin of error. So folks, there you have it. Interesting. So that is a vacuum chamber as a dehydrator. And it took me, yeah, let's say 30 minutes to dry that guy out efficiently. Now next, I would like to try it with a cell phone, something like that. Obviously with a cell phone, that is where this guy will never work because anytime you have a contained space, radiant warmers, and circ uh, circulating warmers, they just will not do it. That's why you got to move to vacuum because vacuum penetrates inside a case and it will boil off all that humidity. There you go. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That is fantastic results. I'm pretty happy with that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below with what you'd like to see in future videos.